it's exciting to, for Clint and I to carry on the tradition of not only just hunting, but the waterfowl hunting that we were introduced to by you know Clint's grandfather and, and my dad, and to watch our two boys kind of take off with it and grow into their own. It's, it's really something special for us to be part of as dads because they're doing a great job. So we're actually going on a youth duck hunt where Clint and I get to sit and watch. Uh, Joey and Connor do their thing. Uh, got invited by our good friend Boehm Townsend down to the Vivian Club in the Sacramento Valley. And then we're going to Kansas on a goose hunt. So it should be something special for Clint and I to watch on one and get to join in on the fun on the next one. So we're gonna have a good time. So we'll get invited down to the uh, Vivian Club by my good friend Bohm Townsend and uh, invite the kids out. This is, I've been on a few youth hunts with Connor. Luckily he gets invited by a few of my friends from time to time and we had Joey out this year. And it's a real experience for the guys. Just to see all those kids out there is exactly what we're trying to do. That's what we enjoy more than anything. Sure, we love to go out there and, and get them ourselves. and. And, and when we get back into the lodge and you get a, you get to interact with all these other kids that were there, that it was, it was just you know a pretty surreal moment. I mean, to, that is exactly what all outdoorsmen should be doing with themselves. We've got a little. A little speed ball, a little heavy metal. So hopefully uh, they get it done this morning. They don't have Clint knife for backup, but <laughs> Sacramento Valley, you know, we see kind of pretty much the same ducks we do at Honey Lake. Maybe more of the better ducks like Sprig and Mallards, but every duck that's there is at Honey Lake, just not as small of a population like Honey Lake. <laughs> Thousands of ducks in Marysville. The best to eat are probably mallard, pintail, and widgeon. If and mallards are pretty rare to get down there. In the rice, they're more of nutgrass ducks down in the marsh. So when you get them, it's really special because they're great to eat. <laughs> One thing about down there in District 10 and, and all of Central Valley, when you get the invite to go down there, you, you got thousands and thousands of ducks and, and pintails or, you know, just so many pintails, which is our favorite duck to eat. But then you got so mallards and you got there. spoonbills and widgeon and teal and, and wood ducks, which the boys ended up getting some wood ducks. And, and we just don't get that variety up here in the desert. So it was kind of a cool experience for the boys. And he went probably 400 yards over there. That dog's gonna probably come back with him. But... 
pretty awesome. That's an awesome retreat right there. I'm gonna go get that bird. Uh, I can see him with the vortex, but he's pretty far. My dad takes me duck hunting every weekend during duck hunting season from start to end. It's every weekend we go have a good time, kill some ducks, and just, you know, it's, it's so much better than staying home. Yeah, it was a really neat experience to just sit back in the blind and watch our two boys do their thing. And, you know, they were calling in the ducks, they were decoying the ducks, they were shooting the ducks. They did it all. Very proud of both of those boys for the hunters that they've become at such an early age. Triple Beard, the first all-lead turkey load from the makers of Heavy Shot. Speedball technology reduces defamation on setback, keeping the pellets more uniform and reduces the pancake effect of lead. Magnum Blend technology, which is a mix of five, sixes, and sevens, lets you take gobblers at any range, whether it's up close and personal or you gotta reach out and touch one. It's available in three and three and a half inch 12 gauge, as well as three inch 20 gauge. Check out the new Triple Beard at heavyshot.com. We do a lot of duck hunting, we do a lot of duck picking by hand and down at this club they had a they have a a plucker and, and the boys just they thought that was the coolest thing in the world. I think Mike and me are gonna have to buy one of those because if we can get them to pluck ducks with the duck plucker, I'm all in for it. And that was a really a good experience for me too, because I'd really never used one. And I mean they worked really good and the kids were they, they really had a good time. They actually had more fun probably than shooting the ducks, picking the ducks, so that was good. We got a couple little, uh, in the sporting clay world, what we call minis. So we have a little hand thrower here, and we're gonna let uh, Joey and Connor shoot a few little targets here and uh, see how good they are, and then maybe they'll really shoot. Mine. I've never even shot these little things before. It was fun down there, you know, we're, we're hunting in the morning and, and at the Vivian Club they like to have everybody off by 10 or 11 o'clock and, and I think that's a great plan um, that a lot of gut, duck clubs do and, and a lot of duck clubs don't do, but I think it's a great plan for letting your birds come back and get back in the ponds and eat and, and feed and relax and, and roost up for the next day's shoot. It, it works out really well for them. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to clean them up real good and then I'm going to put some oranges inside of them. I'm going to pour a little orange juice inside of them too. Concentrate. I'm going to put a little Worcestershire in the pan. Then I'm going to cover their breasts with bacon. And uh, tonight in a little while we're going to sit there in a little while in the pan. And then we're going to put them in the uh, barbecue at about as hot as we can get that barbecue. And we're going to cook them for about 24 to 25 minutes, depending on how hot we can get that barbecue. We're gonna eat these rare. The last night of the hunt that we're there at Bones Club, uh, Clint cooked dinner for everybody. Uh, the ducks that Connor and Joey shot, Clint prepared this nice big giant feast and he's a really good cook and it was, it was really, really good. So I guess the only thing I can say about that is he listened to his grandma when he was a kid and I didn't, so. 
probably looking down on me going, you know, hey Mikey, you should have listened to me. I, I can barbecue some steaks and stuff, but nothing like Clint can do so. So Clint's specialty for this trip is cooking the meal. Mine's yeah. gonna be eating it. <laughs> <laughs> late in the season we don't really do a lot of calling because these ducks have come all the way from northern Canada come all the way down and how many times they've been shot at and been called at and when you call they're just kind of call shy is what we call it where you call and they kind of turn and go the other direction Nicely done, boys. It was a lot better just me and Connor hunting because we kind of had the whole thing to ourselves and we didn't have to compete. You know, we were both like on a team like kids versus dads. And this time it was just kids, so it was a lot easier. It's, it's really fun to hunt with Connor and Joey now because they're starting to kind of create their own little their little minds are going and, and we've taught them what we know and they're taking on some stuff themselves and and it's kind of fun to watch you know these these kids are out there and they're banging away and i want to thank everybody at the lodge for having us down there in sacramento valley it's a once in a lifetime thing and so many ducks down there and it was just awesome to have the opportunity to be there Well, the other ones didn't make it. Guns or gear? I don't know. So did they come in on the two o'clock? They must have. Yeah. yeah, but two bags made it, two did not. Yeah, you know, getting get to Wichita is a lot of fun. It, it uh, you know, you never know what's gonna, what's gonna show up as with anywhere we go. When we got there, we found out that they got them on the wrong plane and they went somewhere else on earth. God knows where. The, the year of, uh, the bad airline program where you, they lose all your gear and and uh, cancel your flights and such like that. And that happened to us both times on that trip. Well, I got some, I got some Cryptek gear that showed up. Uh, no guns. Let me get out of your way. These guys are going to let us borrow some guns, so we should be set. So we're not going to let this uh, take away from the trip. So I got some light bell functions right now. Well, I had too much Budweiser last night to get my light to work. This is a gun. I don't know what to do. I know what that's from. What is that? Hi, from? Harry. Hi. Hey. Oh, right. Harry Carey. Let it roll off your back. Everything is good. Find the positive in everything. So here we go. Start to sound like Clink of Corona. When we go to Kansas and, and uh, we hunt with the Dugan boys, you know, we're, we're used to, you know, seeing lots of birds and sometimes we're hunting right in, in Wichita. I mean, it, it's exciting. We're hunting these grain fields and, and it's cold. Atta boys. Atta boys. Hey, hey, nice job. Finally. Holy moly. Second group comes in. 
you know, after the first cut is shorter, the second group makes, makes a little commitment because the Dugan boys, they change the decoys about every 15 or 20 seconds. When they came in, we got up to shoot and saw that they all fell. I was one of the happiest kids ever to see them all fall down. You know, five birds in, five birds down, a little better. Oh, that's bad. Check your gun. Check your barrel. We pulled the barrel down, checked the barrel. The wad had gotten stuck in the barrel. So they unloaded his gun and then make sure the bolt was open and then grabbed a stick and pushed the wad out. And it was great that they did that because if they wouldn't have done that and he would have shot again, um, that barrel could have blown up right in his face and it could have been a very bad injury. But I'll tell you right now, um, when you're out there, if that happens, you need to clear your barrel, you need to check it, and if you don't, the gun's gonna blow up in your face, and that is not a good situation. This, this was stuck in his barrel. You know, it pays to shoot good ammunition, and I'm not gonna say what he's shooting, but he doesn't shoot heavy shot, evidently, until now. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it does pay to shoot good shot out there. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to leave Kansas because there's just so many birds there, whether you're getting them or not, you're seeing them in this field or that field or the next field or the next ranch or wherever. You never want to leave when you get when you get there because I mean there's just thousands and thousands of birds and it's just an unbelievable place. It's really fun to go play. Those big groups started coming in. It was super cool because they'd be over you at about 40 yards high and you're waiting for them to be feet down and they're just so loud and you just can't wait to be able to try and harvest one of them and it was just an amazing sight. Hearing protection is very important in the sport of hunting because you get deaf very quick with all the rounds going off right next to your head. And these, called sport ear, are very good because they take the sound of the shot right out immediately. You don't hear anything at all and they allow you to be able to hear. Even when you stop hunting, when, when you're super old, you can still be able to hear. This is another style of ear protection made by Sport Ear. They're just little ones that you could just pop in your ear so they're not sticking out big time and they fit right into your ear with the little molds. They mold right into your ear perfectly and they won't ever fall out or anything. And they do the same exact thing as the big muffs. When our parents were young, they didn't have this kind of technology where when they went out hunting and shot, they just kind of lost their hearing as they went along. I think it's super important for kids my age to be wearing these, e either one, because we don't, I know we don't want to grow up and be deaf like our parents. Today though, we've got a, a watershed to the north here. Wind's going to be out of the north three, three to four miles an hour. Uh, I really think we're going to get them today. Keep your fingers crossed. It's kind of like the Wynn Las Vegas, Kansas style with this blind they set up this for us this morning. This is awesome, awesome. So So one of the things we really like about going out there is, you know, they got their kids out there hunting with us and 
you know, with our kids and their kids and they're you know playing football and frisbee out in the field i mean they're just having a good time that's what, what kids are supposed to be doing in the out, outdoors we were there and it was super sunny and there was a bunch of big groups coming in it was just a phenomenal day one of the best days we had and then all of a sudden clouds came over the horizon and it just rained for two days straight kansas style Put a little cryptic on, sit in the middle of the field. Whack them and stack them. You got a 50 right behind them. That's what I was saying. Leave them, leave them, leave them. See if they come in. So as you can tell in this last scene of the show here, we got a group of 15 geese coming into us and neighboring field shoots and the birds flare and it was kind of the last minute of the last day of our trip, but that's hunting. So Kansas is kind of one of the meccas for waterfowl hunting and we had a great trip and uh, shot a lot of birds, but it's also public land hunting. so. You know, sometimes you're the windshield and sometimes you're the bug. So at the end of this show, we were the bug. But we had a great time. You know, the boys had a great time down at Bohm's place on the youth hunt. And Clint and I had a great time getting to do a little shooting in Kansas ourselves. And we'd like to thank uh, Fierce Outfitters for having us down here in Kansas and Bohm Townsend for having us at, uh, down the Sacramento Valley at the Vivian Club. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Uh, Tune in next week. See you later. They're trying to confirm if they have weapons or not. Eagle 6, save the tree. You have their weapons in the area, negative contact. Save the tree, Eagle 6. Where are they? Find out where they are. They just come up there to the door. They're in South Bend. They're in South Bend. All right, these guys definitely got weapons. The wreckage of this life can build you or tear you down. What motivates you when there's no one else around?